right, let's start part two or you know, next set of notes. So remember, you can always pause uh, to give yourself some time to catch up when we're taking notes. So we're moving on from simplifying radicals uh, to actually doing some math with them. So we're going to add and subtract. So our title is add and subtract radical expressions. So we're going to add these radical expressions and we're going to subtract them, right? So what you need to kind of get your head around is this idea of like radicals. So we're going to talk about like radicals. And you already have a lot of experience with this. Like radicals are just basically like terms. Like radicals and like terms. I mean, you've added like terms before. You've added and subtracted. So we're just going to pretend the radical is a variable. Like radicals, like terms, just pretend that radical, whatever's underneath that square root sign or that radical sign, pretend it's a variable. Um, like radicals have exactly the same radicand. Exactly the same radicand. Um, so you can you can put them together, you know like radicals are like terms. Uh, so like terms, oops, like has an E on it, like terms, you know, 4x and negative 10x. Those are like terms. They can go together. So like radicals are, you know, 4x, 4 radical x, and negative 10 radical x. Those are like radicals. They have exactly the same radicand, right? We're, we're pretending that this whole thing underneath that radical sign is that variable, just like over here. Uh, so we could have, you know, three radical six y and one half radical six y. Those are like radicals. They're exactly the same radicand. We can put them together. Um, Non-like radicals have different radicands. Uh, so, you know, 2 radical 8 and 8 radical 2. The radicands are different, so those cannot be put together. They're not the same. Uh, negative 6 radical x and radical 6x. The radicands are different. I'm going to turn on the light. Maybe that's going to give us some more juice behind here. Right? These are different. They cannot go together. They're not like terms. So like terms, you know, um, non-like terms would be, you know, 8x squared and 8x, those are different, right? Those can't be put together. Like terms, like radicals, non-like terms, non-like radicals, they're things that can't go together. So they have like terms, like radicals, have the exact same radicand. So there are gonna be two types of problems you're gonna encounter, always, right? There's the easy ones and the hard ones. So let's talk type one first. So easy, type one problems. Um, if the radicands, again, the number underneath that radical sign are the same, you add or subtract the coefficient.
right? So the number out in front. So if that radicand, if the number underneath the radical sign are exactly the same, just add or subtract the coefficients. Uh, 3 radical 7 plus 8 radical 7. The radicands are exactly the same. 3 radical 7 plus 8 radical 7. Exactly the same, so we add or subtract the coefficients. So 3 plus 8 is 11, and the radical stays the same. Let's try 9 radical y minus radical y. Now, don't go full steam ahead and stop thinking. Because, you guys, that's not 9 radical y minus radical y. It's not 9, because it's really a coefficient of 1. So 9 minus 1 is 8, and the radicand is the same, radical y. If I had radical 7 minus 7 radical 11, I can put a 1 here. Are the radicands the same? No, this one's 7, and this one's 11. So I cannot do anything. That's problems done. I, it's, it's over. They have to be exactly the same radicand. So that's type 1. Super easy. Um, however, you can really start clicking along and make some simple mental uh, math mistakes. Forgetting to put in a coefficient of 1 is a really common mistake. Um, so just really kind of be aware as you're doing these problems of what you're doing before you actually write an answer. So now we have type 2. So it's type 2, a little bit harder. Sometimes, now again, I say sometimes, it's not going to be 50% of the time, it's probably going to be 75% of the time, 80% of the time, most of the time. Right? Sometimes you need to simplify the radicals first. Then add or subtract the coefficients. So sometimes you're going to have to do you know, some, some algebra first. You're going to have to add or subtract. Before you add or subtract, you're going to have to do some simplification. So let's start out basics. Let's start out with one that we can kind of go through together. Uh, radical 12 plus radical 27. Those are different. They cannot go together the way that they are. However, I can factor this to 3 and 4. 3 is prime. 4 is 2 and 2. And I'm done. I look for pairs. I've got a pair of twos. So I take out one two, and I have radical three left behind. 27 is three and nine. Nine is three and three. I look for pairs again. I've got a three and a three. So I take out one of those values, I take out a 3, and what's left behind, my single that's left behind is 3. So now, radical 12 is really simplified as 2 radical 3, and radical 27 is really simplified as 3 radical 3. Can these now be combined? Yes, to 5 radical 3. Now, some of you are noticing a little bit of a pattern. Some of you are saying, Mrs. Long, right here, I can stop. 3 times 4, I'm going to stop because 4 is a perfect square. And I can do the square root of 4, which is 2. 3 times 9, I can stop because 9 is a perfect square, which is 3. You can keep going. You're going to get the same answer. But some of you are noticing that I'm factoring and I'm getting these perfect squares. Remember when we took notes um, a while ago and we talked about 
you need to have use your knowledge of perfect squares. If you can find this number, the radicand, and it can be broken down into two factors, and one of those factors is a perfect square, you're good to go. So that's where this is going to come in handy that you got the other day. So if we uh, move on to, uh, let's try 5 radical 28 plus 8 radical 7x. All right, so let's look at 5 radical 28x plus 8 radical 7x. These cannot be put together right now because they are unlike radicals. The, the radicands are different. So I'm going to do a little investigating, and I'm going to look at 14, or at 28, the factors of 28. Am I going to use 2 times 14, or am I going to use 4 times 7? Well, 2 and 14, neither of those are perfect. But 4 times 7, 4 is a perfect number. So I'm going to rewrite this as 5 times 4 times 7 times x. And I'm going to put plus 8 radical 7. Does 7 have any factors? No, it's perfect. Or not it's perfect, it's prime. So I'm, I'm just going to leave it there. It has no factors. And if I look square root of 4. What is the square root of 4? Square root of 4 is 2. So this becomes 5 times 2 and then 7x is left behind plus 8 radical 7x. If I simplify 5 times 2 is 10 radical 7x plus 8 radical 7x. Now my radicands are the same, so I can combine like radicals. You're going to get the same answer if you prime factor this. It's going to give you the same thing. This is just a little bit faster. Let's try another one. A radical 48x to the third plus radical 20, or no, that's 12, x to the seventh. Okay, so let's talk this through a little bit. Um, I can prime factor 48. 2 times 24, circle the 2. 24 is 2 times 12, circle the 2. I, I mean, I can, I can do that. Or I can look and I can say, okay, 48. Let's see, I've got 2 and 24, I've got 3 and 16, I've got 4 and 12, I've got 6 and 8. All right, I have 4, which is perfect. Oh, but I have 16, that's a bigger perfect. Let's go with 16. So 3 times 16. So 3 times 16, x, 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 right? Plus, let's go to 12. Let's look at factors of 12. Factors of 12, I've got 2 and 6. No, that doesn't work. 3 and 4. Oh, 4 is perfect, so let's do 3 and 4. 3 times 4. Now, I don't want to write out x to the 7th. x, 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 x. So what you can do, here's a little trick. Take one x out if it's odd. So x, x to the 6th, is the same thing as x to the 7th, right? There's 1 here and there's 6 here, so that makes a total of 7. But because it's even, I can put it over here and I, I, I can just divide by 2. Or you could do x, 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 x. Doesn't matter. So this one, I could have done x and then an x squared. So now let's look, okay, x to the six, 16, right? That's really 4. And I've got a pair here, so I take one out. If I've got a pair, I take one away. And what's left behind is 
3x. Plus, all right, let's go over here. Square root of 4 is 2. That's by itself. Oh, but I have an even. So if I was going to break this into six sets, how many pairs are in a set of six? So all you do is you take the exponent divided by two, which is x to the third. What's left behind? 3x. Now this is your final answer because, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the coefficients must also be like terms if adding and subtracting. So that can't go together. They're not like terms. They're done. We're stuck. Let's try another one. Let's squeeze it in down here. Uh, let's do radical 35 plus 4 radical mm, Let's do four radical. I changed it. Uh, let's do radical 20 plus four radical five. Let's add some variables. Let's make it interesting. Radical 20 X squared. Radical X to the fourth. Okay, so 20. Should I use 2 and 10 as my factors for 20? 2 and 10. Are either of those perfect? Nope. Should I use 4 and 5? Are either of those perfect? Yeah, 4 is perfect. So, radical 4 times 5. I'm going to leave x squared because it's even. Or you could rewrite it as... 4 times 5 times x times x. Or you could do 4 times 5, 2 times 2, x times x. It doesn't matter. All of these ways are correct. You pick which one you feel most comfortable with. Plus 4... All right, 45, so let's look at 45. Am I gonna use three and 15? Are either of those perfect numbers? No. But five and nine, nine is. So five times nine times, I can leave x to the fourth, or you could write it all out, five times nine times x times x times x times x. I don't care. Both are going to work. Because the square root of 4 is a perfect number, so that's 2 comes out. Just like over here, you have a pair of 2's, so one of them comes out. Right? A pair of 2's, so 1 comes out. You're left behind with a 5, so that would go underneath the radical. Oh, wait, I also have a pair of x's. So one of them comes out. And I'm left behind with 5. Then I go over here. Let's see. Oh, Radical 9. The square root of 9 is... 3, so that comes out. I've got a pair of x's here, so 1 comes out. I've got a pair of x's here, so 1 comes out. And I'm left behind with a 5. That's really 12x 
squared radical 5. Can these be combined? Well, the radicands are the same, but are my coefficients like terms? Can 2x plus 12x squared, can those two go together? No. So my answer is 2x radical 5 plus 12x squared radical 5. So let's recap. Type 1, they're going to be super easy. The radicands are the same, so you just add the coefficients. Type 2, this is going to be the majority. Sometimes you just need to simplify the radicals. So radical 12 plus radical 27 doesn't go together. But if I factor it, if I simplify it, I get 2 radical 3 plus 3 radical 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. They can go together because my radicals are the same. We learned or we discovered or we um, got to the point that hopefully we start using these factor squares and we look for can 28 be written as a product of two numbers? One of them is perfect. 28 is 4 times 7. I can do the square root of 4 because that's 2 leaving behind 7, because it cannot be square rooted. x cannot be square rooted, so 7x stays in the radicand. Over here, 7x, that can't be factored, so that stays. So I have 5 times 2, radical 4 is 2. 5 times 2 is 10. So 10 radical 7x plus 8 radical 7x is 18 radical 7x. We also talked about this little trick right here, that if you have a odd exponent, just take one out of it, leaving behind an even exponent. So 7 becomes x and x to the sixth. How many pairs, sets of 2, divide by 2, how many pairs are in 6? Six? 6 divided by 2 is 3, leaving behind one lonely. Same thing here. I could take out 1, leaving behind x squared. How many pairs are in x squared? There's one pair, leaving behind one lonely. Your coefficients also have to be like terms in order to add or subtract. So 4x plus 2x to the third cannot go together. They're not like terms. Their variables are different. So that's done. We finished.